I am Vinny Torrett, and folks, it's Vinny Sunday School. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You might be soft and succulent when we start this process, but uh, hang in there. Before long, you'll be lean and mean, just like Miss Gina Grad, right, Gina? <laughs> Yes, well, I'm getting back to lean and mean, thanks to you. I had a, you know, we all had a year of just like, we kind of meant to do it. And now I, I can't admit the last lockdown year, I did cook 100% of the time. But it was just a lot of stress and a lot of overeating even the good stuff, which, you know, I was still indul. you know, why, why eat a piece of the casserole when I could have the pan, you know, so I was just kind of not doing what I was supposed to do. And now I'm starting to feel a lot better as you know, and thanks to you. And you're um, looking great I, too, by the way. Can you tell? I yeah, lost I can. Um, I can. almost 10 pounds. Yeah, no, it shows in your face. Uh, folks, yeah. we're, we're videotaping this. So if you want to see what Gina looks like nowadays, uh, I'm talking about Digliani here. Oh, um, oh look at you. Yeah. Thank you. I've been compared before. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. God. Um, Cause you know, I used to do a, a little nude modeling in college. So Modigliani was definitely in well, my- well, hang, hang on, Gina. Well, hang on. I gotta get but, my composure. You did but, what in college? Oh, you knew that. I never told oh, you that. Well, I'm... Oh, I don't know. I, I, because it paid the best. It paid better than working at the snack bar. Hang I, got, on. Like, I knew this. When did we have this conversation? I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. I'm pretty doing, open. Uh, you know, you know how when you're in college, you do some nude modeling. Yeah. Everybody does new. Oh, come on. I was in the theater department. We were all hippies. Yeah. So I and so I have murals of me. I mean, my mom still has them in the garage. Wall size murals of me laying asleep on the floor naked because I would always um, get the teacher to agree to a laying down pose. And I would say, good night. And they would wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> because so you, got, you got paid to take a nap. Yes, naked. And I used to, I because the first time I ever did it, I was terrified. And it was a pose, an advanced class. So it was a pose where my body was looking one way and my head was looking backwards. And all of a sudden I heard like, whoa, 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 whoa. And like my eyes started going dark and I passed out. I fainted because I had, I guess, cut off the circulation because it's just right. the way I was standing. So I woke up, my feet were on a chair. They're like, trying to put like a muffin in my mouth and Pepsi and wake me up. And I was really scared. And after that, I didn't say no more nude modeling. I said, no more standing up nude modeling. <laughs> uh, folks, that's what you call the ultimate and lazy. I'll be your model if I could take a nap. Yep. I would get a floor heater. I asked for a floor heater because it was Kansas in the winter. Yeah. And I go, okay, everybody good with this? Okay. See you in 45. So yes, I, I did. <laughs> That was, that was going to be my next question. How long do you have to lay there? I've always wondered about that whenever you. It depends. Because I've been in every museum, not every museum, but you know, the Borghese is one of my right. favorites. I've been to a bunch of them in France and Italy. You know, if you go to um, uh, um, uh, Florence, there's all the, you know, the, the incredible museum. Of course. There. And you look at, at all of these portraits that were done back then, mm -hmm. right? And you go, okay, how they had to sit. How many oh, days? How does that days. work? Well, how and that's. Work? Yeah. And th those were commissioned. So those guys weren't allowed to screw up or, you know, their head might be on a, a, a right, pole. Right. But um, with mine, the classes were between 45 minutes and an hour and a half. And my only rule, because, you know, it's weird because I'm so young. How could this next thing be true? What I'm going to say, this was before cameras and cell phones. So that didn't exist. That wasn't an issue. So my only rule at the time was I wouldn't do painting classes, only charcoal, because the painting classes look too realistic. And I was a little, you know, I was a little modest being Got a nude it. model it. and it just looked too real. So I only ever did pencil sketch and charcoal and yeah, they took, you know, they took the whole class period. And how long was the class period? It, it's somewhere 45 minutes, somewhere an hour and a half. So they had to get the whole thing done within 45 minutes and an hour and a half. Yes, but these were sketches. So it's not like they were filling in with color, which I think made a right. big difference. So Other that way, was, Yeah. I was trying to remember the Uffizi is the uh, famous museum in Florence, and it's um, it's where um, uh, Michelangelo's David is now. I've it's been. Yeah, yeah. So you, oh, it's great. It is, and I do. I trust me as a shapely Jewess. I do long for the days of that being the uh, idyllic shape, as opposed to um, you know the willowy willow. But uh, but you know I'm I'm happy with with where I'm at right now. 
and I'm getting, you know, and I'm losing, I, I, I don't, but I can't tell you how much precisely I've lost today because I hear you in my head and I will not weigh myself more than Good. twice a week. And I know that's even too much. No, I, I, and I agree with that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do it more than twice a week. Um, and uh, so you're doing the right thing, Gina, just keep, Keep doing it. I am. Um, thank you. And, and don't I, don't do any. Uh, what was it? Carb cycling. Carb cycling. Carb yeah. cycling. Um, but I, you know, there's always you want to do something. I don't love exercise. I don't. I love going on walks. I love going on hikes. But I don't. I just don't love exercising in general. But when I find an opportunity to do something sort of fun and creative and off the beaten path, literally, that's when I jump on it. And I thought. Even when I was doing this, I was like, God, Vinny would love this. So it was my birthday last weekend and we decided to go to the desert because I love the desert because I think the desert is magical. I saw, you, I I saw you in front of a, um, uh, an Edsel. Oh, an Edsel. That was, you know, it's amazing what passes for art in the desert. Burned out cars, overturned sinks and toilets, but it's quote unquote art installation. But we, lo I love that stuff. Uh, Gene, I want to show you this. Yes. Uh, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to see if I could do it. Put it in the camera. This is uh, when, when I got to visit David, I, I spent Do it closer. I, I spent three hours with David that day. Uh -huh. And um, you, you can see I have every photo of am I going the wrong way? Hang on. Uh, oh, that's leaning tower of Pisa. All right, David starts here. <laughs> wow. Uh, but I, I just I just took every photo you could take of David uh, of just different body it, because you know, my whole thing is, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time. Here's more of it. It just wow. goes and goes and goes because I, I would sit there for 45 minutes and just look at his foot and the calcaneus going into the, the gastrocnemius and going right. In, you know, I was just I was that into it that I, I had to look at every vein, <clears throat> had to look at, at every tendon in his foot. I had to look at the knee. I had to look at I, I spent so many hours with David, you know, being a guy that, that went through exercise physiology and cut on cadavers mm -hmm. and do the mm -hmm. whole thing. Nothing mattered more to me. And I, I have hundreds of pictures of me and David. Um, and, and, you know, it, I, I, I treasure what's in this phone. I hope I never lose these. Oh, um, my God. And I can't wait to go back and visit him again, because I also visited um, uh, which is my favorite David is uh, Bernini's David, which is much smaller. And that's at the Borghese. If you ever oh, get I've never it. been. Well, and it, when, when you talk about him like that, I'm reminded of what they say is a quote from Michelangelo, which is the, some of the most beautiful, you know, the most beautiful quote I've ever heard when they're asking when he was asked about how he how he made David. And he said, I saw an angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. Yeah. And that's how he made David. It, it's it's striking and it's amazing and you know just just the size of it. You know when you look oh. at, when you look at the size of David, unbelievable. Um, you know versus uh, Bernini's David, which you know Bernini had more relief in his work and um, and you know so every there's a lot more relief in the hair and the whole thing and, and the way the muscles are and Bernini just did incredible. Bernini is my favorite. Well, Barnett. that I have to see. Um, yeah, look up uh, Bernini's David. It's it's in the Borghese and uh, in Rome. And uh, oh my God, just a wonderful piece of art. Uh, I need to visit him again too. Oh God, that's yeah. gorgeous. That's my favorite museum in the world. And I've never been. That is, and it was created in 1623. That statue. David's are. Uh, I can't remember. Um, um, in if the at the Borghese, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. My God, they would dig up bodies right after they were put in the ground. They would dig them up and and just, you know, and take them in and and strip them and look at the muscle formation. Really, yeah, that was the beginning of of of, of modern medicine. Was these artists? And people don't realize that. Um, oh my God, yes. You know, look at uh, uh, Gray's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. The the man. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah. The, um, that that was done by um, Da Vinci. Um, it, it, everything these guys did were, it, it was just unbelievable. And and uh, and we we brought that to where we are today.
Yeah, and, Amen. And, you so, know, talk about they say, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants like, oh, we're in the future. We know how to do everything. Eh, don't forget how you got here. Yeah, uh, folks, go back. We, we, we haven't come that far. Uh, so, Gina, you were in the desert. So we're in the desert and I thought, you know, I don't want to just sit around. It's hot and yes, you know, it'd be fun to sit around, but I can't do it. I'm, you know, ac super accountable. I'm putting my, you know, my, my exercise and stuff in my little app. And I, you know, I want to keep the ball in the air. I said, what could we do that would be fun and different? You know, we could go into Joshua tree and go to the national park and walk around and that's fine. But I found something that was a little more interesting and I'm so glad I did. We went on a goat hike in the middle of the desert. This is a man uh, who runs this goat farm in literally the middle of nowhere. I mean, I don't even know how my tires didn't pop a thousand times with the off-roading we had to do. And you get there and it's this goat farm and yeah. there's babies and you can pick them up, little goat, oh God, they're so cute. And just goats of all ages and all sizes. And they're like dogs. They just yeah. follow you. They're like dogs. So he, he takes us, there's a group of 10 of us and there's 20 goats and they're rearing up on each other and butting heads and locking horns and they're just playing and they bump you in, the, you know, to get you away so they can climb up in the tree and eat the leaves. And they're, they love to put their little head against your leg. And they are dogs. So we went on this five and a half mile sunset goat hike that was treacherous <laughs> because we were taking the goat path. If the goat can go up the side of a mountain, so can we. Oh, wow. It was cool. And I said, like, wow, how do you know, you know, everyone is up for this, you know, physically? And he said, well, I kind of size up the group. You know, we'll do it. You know, after going a mile, I'll see which way to go. And if there's kids, I won't do this. So we went the adults. We went the advanced way and I did it. And I, you know, I'm nice. like, one second. And like Andy's laughing. And I was like, no, I love this. Like, keep going. I was just so not ready for it but we had a blast we're we're traversing these boulders and following the goats and they kind of bump into you and keep going and um they're just they're so playful they're so sweet this is one of our many stops and just they just want to you know <laughs> they're just characters and they they don't like to be alone so they just they're herd animals and they'll follow the leader and Oh we had such a great time. And it was so funny because when we got back, I think this is something that, and look at this face. I mean, come on. So cute. When we got back, this might make Adam, I it did make Adam want to throw up, but I think you would appreciate it. Yeah. When we got back, the sun was just setting. The wind is kicking up. It's the desert. It's gorgeous. We're exhausted. We're sweating. And guess what refreshing beverage we are offered? I'm going to go, since you're at a goat farm, I'm going to go with goat milk. <laughs> It was the creamiest, most delicious milk I've ever had in my life. Buttery, like, like heavy whipping cream from the grocery store tastes like 2% next to this. This was just uh -huh. buttery, creamy. And it's like, you think that wouldn't be very refreshing, but sitting there with the wind picking up and the sun going down, drinking this, it was awesome. Um, I, I um, you know, when people say refreshing, I heard one half of an Adam Carolla show this week. Oh, <laughs> and he talked about his grandfather, someone yep. who drank um, butter buttermilk. I, I love I, this. I drink buttermilk, Gina, daily. Why? I love it. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever had it except to cook with. No, I don't use I don't get like the cheap in, in the carton. I get it from a farm. Uh, it's in the glass bottle. You know, oh, it's, wow. it's, expensive. it's my treat. It's the thing I afford myself. Um, I'll drink one third of a bottle before I start a workout, especially on leg day. And then another third of that bottle right after the leg workout. And I'm telling you, it's it's always good for what ails you. The buttermilk I have when it comes out of that jug is like, gluck, gluck, yes. gluck, gluck. It is not like if you get the super refined stuff. Yeah, it tastes like buttermilk, but it's not like the stuff I got back when I was growing up. This stuff just clumps out. It looks like, oh, my God, this is bad. You know, it's right. yogurty. It's got right. That, you get that yogurt kind of you, you can taste it's a sour. Lot of it. Yeah, it's sour. Yeah. But I love the taste. I love it when it's ice cold and I just chug it before oh. and after workout. Probably. I work out every day. So 
three, four days a week. I probably wow. go through three jugs of that a week and have them when he was talking about, it, he goes, I don't understand how my uncle or my cousin or someone loves yep. talk about it being refreshing. Well, you can walk in tomorrow and tell him, well, Vinny thinks this is the most refreshing thing <laughs> he's ever had because it is. And, I love um, that. This is the good stuff. I, I, I afford myself to good stuff. I, I don't mess around with with my buttermilk. And that's now I'm, food. I'm very curious to taste buttermilk again. I've only used it for like, you know, fried chicken or something. I've never tasted it. Have but you ever I'm, had a kefir? Yes. It, it's, it's it, you know, when I can't find buttermilk, I'll find a good, it's hard to find high fat kefir. Well, but, kefir, um, they always tell you to drink like, you know, if you're taking antibiotics, cause it's a if, probiotic. If you, Gina, I've had a stomach where I was like, I'm going to be throwing up in the next five minutes. And there's two things that taste horrible that will make it go away. One is buttermilk. Well, there's three things, buttermilk and kefir. Those are on the same level. So they're together. If you can get yogurt, which is kefir, kefir or buttermilk, I call that one thing. The <laughs> other thing is an old Italian thing called Ferne Branca. What's that? Look up Ferne Branca. It's good for what ails you. If you... Kids, you can't drink this. It's an alcoholic beverage. I've actually gotten drunk on Ferne Branca. I was in uh, Capri and I got drunk on Ferne Branca. Don't ask me how that happened. Uh, because it's actually made, it's actually fermented like, um, I want to say celery or maybe finocchio. It's probably finocchio. And it tastes like a goat's butt. <laughs> and it smells like a goat's butt. But I'm telling you, Ferne Branca, it's, it's a liqueur. It will fix what's ailing you. You break your leg. If you're in Italy and you break your leg, they're giving you some Ferne Branca. <laughs> That's so funny because it just says flavor, bitter. <laughs> when I look it's, it it's bitter. <laughs> it's bitter. Oh, that is so funny. There's another, um, a good friend of mine grew up in a very Italian house and her, she was first generation. And she said, I think I've told you this before, when she was in kindergarten, her grandfather, who was from the old country, didn't speak any English, didn't really know how American kids rolled, would make her for breakfast. I can't remember what it's called. It's an Italian drink, apparently. Uh, raw egg, uh, mix, whisked, sugar, wine, and coffee, I think. And yeah. like whisked together. And she'd break, drink that and stumble to kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, I had some relatives when I was a kid. I, I'm always telling my nephews, it's like, I don't think you understand the world I grew up in because <laughs> the ones from Italy were still alive. Right. They had some thoughts. And, um, you know, they had one that the Jews believe, too, because in my hometown, they grouped the Jews together with the Italians. Oh, sure. Because they wanted to keep an eye on us. Yeah, and, right. Um, they, you know, they would never eat fish and dairy products. And that's from the old days because, you know, you couldn't keep things refrigerated. So right. dairy products and, and fish could make you sick. Yeah. I will bet, Gina, wait, hang on. I will bet I'm going to go to my liquor cabinet. <laughs> I, I bet I have Ferne Branca in my liquor. I, there's no way that I don't have it. No self-respecting Italian. Yeah. You want to see how Italian I am? Hang on. <laughs> Go ahead. Cover. Well, me. he does that. I'm looking up the name of it. I thought it was like Tutto de something, but all I'm seeing when I'm just looking up egg and coffee and wine and sugar, and it's a uh, how to make Swedish egg coffee. There's a Vietnamese egg coffee and a Scandinavian egg coffee. Anybody out there ever try this? This is like taking bulletproof coffee to the next level as opposed to butter. You're putting in a raw egg. Not my jam, but I do respect it. But I'm wondering what if anyone knows what that was called in Italian. Coffee, egg, sugar, and like red wine. <laughs> you give it to your children before they go to school. Oh, my God. He's back. What does he have in his hot little hand? So, so, Gina, I thought I was, I, I almost became a liar. I started sweating over there by the liquor cabinet. Um, and I was, I was going to say, well, you know, maybe it's in the upstairs liquor cabinet, you know. Sure. Yeah, you know, I was going to go with that. But um, there's no, you, you can't say you're Italian unless <laughs> you have this in your house. Frette Branca. I've never heard of that. They've written. Wait, books it's about like almost things. gone. Yeah, you, you keep it for years and years. I'm telling you, you keep if I had a stomach ache right now, the Gina, you can here. I'm going to open this bottle. You can smell this through the Internet. 
Oh, that is strong. It smells like something you can rub on your body. <laughs> that is pungent. Yeah, no, uh, Jews don't know from this. We don't even let you guys have this. Look for that right there, folks. Right there. Uh, can we pick that up? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you have that it. That is hysterical. That's right. Uh, I, you, look, I will bet. Um, what's his name? The, the comedian that comes on, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Uh, uh, I love this guy. On your hey, show, the, the, the Italian comedian that comes on the Adam Carolla show. He's a regular, like. Oh, that. Cesario. Jeff, ask Jeff Cesario if he knows from Fernando Branca. I okay. guarantee you, <laughs> he's going to go. Yeah, what you got, son? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he'll tell some story about some great aunt that wore a babushka that gave him this. Yep. Broke his leg once. They gave him some Fernando Branca. He was three. <sighs> Guaranteed. That is so good. And I, I did look up the drink that I was talking about. I, it, they don't give what it's called, but um, they call it the Italian breakfast of champions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else my, my great aunt uh, Rose used to do? Uh, my mom's aunt. Um, if, if you even sniffled for a second or, or just went, <clears throat> she would mix you up a toddy. And I'm, I'm like, I'm 10 years old and she would, she would take uh, uh, like uh, makers, hot water, lemon, honey, and mix it together and go, drink this, just drink this. And I'm like, you realize I'm nine, right? And you just <laughs> poured a half a gallon of booze and <laughs> drink this. It's good. It's good for what you, you realize it's Tuesday at three o'clock, right? Yeah, but it'll really clear out your head. <laughs> this is what you need. Yeah, this, this is the family I grew up with. That These are the people awesome. I grew up with. And you're still uh, here to, to tell the tale. Somehow I'm, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I think we all learned a little something today. Yeah. Get on Don't the your, trail and get yep. some Frenet Branca. Get some buttermilk and Frenet Branca. Gina, don't worry. Whenever I give you your Christmas gift this year of booze, yes. it won't be Frenet Branca. Oh, or maybe it will be. God. Oh, God. <laughs> well, as long as it's medicinal, I'll try it. It's medicinal. <laughs> It's medicinal. That stuff will fix whatever's broken. Done and done. Guaranteed. All right, we're going we're gonna to call that the show. Did we learn something today? We learned too much today. I love the picture of the Etzel. You know, my dad has two Etzels. Why? My dad uh, believes that uh, Ford's the greatest car that's ever been. He also has, a, a, I think, at least one. He had two or three Model A's at one time. He, my dad fixes up old cars. And um, he has the, the same year Fairlane in the same color that he took my mom on her first date. That is yeah, 50 something Fairlane. But does and, he uh, know that the Edsel was considered one of the worst cars ever made? He, he could tell you everything there is to know about the Edsel. He'll say wow. this is a flop. He will tell you it was a car ahead of his time. That, oh, wow. um, you know, because they did that big oval uh -huh. grill in the front. Nobody was, nobody was ready for that. Of course, Henry Ford named it after his son, Etzel, mm -hmm. who died, I who think. died. And uh, my dad could tell you everything about everything wow. about Ford. he, he um, it, it's amazing what he could tell you. And you would think he was reading it from a book. That's how he, um, you know, my dad could tell you everything about Ford. Did he, did he know that Ford wasn't a huge fan of the Jews? Uh, he can tell you that um, Ford uh, hated Jews. He was an anti-Semite. <laughs> And he would also tell you that Ford helped the war in quicker yeah, right. and saved a bunch of Jewish lives. Yeah. Whether he liked it or not. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, yeah. My, my dad can tell you all of that about yeah. Henry Ford. Um, the guy did not, he, he was an anti-Semite. Yeah. But, you know, and we've talked about that on the show. Like, do we care what's in your heart or do we care what you do? You know, he, he did not like Jews yet. He helped win a war to, you know, protect them. So well, it's, it's you know, I don't give I don't give Henry Ford a pass on that because he didn't win. The, he he wasn't out to win the war. He was out to make a buck. So let's call True. it what it is. He you know, the, the Jews happened to be the benefactor of him trying to make a buck. Right. Right. If so, they, thank you for saying that. That's interesting yeah. because so, that's you, not. Oh, you know, he is not a hero. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you could call him a war hero because, right. uh, he, you know, he, he converted his factory. But let's be honest, had he not converted it, Ford would have been sunk. Gone out of business. Absolutely. So, 
thing. You know, yeah. So I don't, I don't look at him as a war hero. Yeah. The guy didn't shoot one Nazi, not one. He right. made something that, that was able to drop some bombs on Nazis and what have you. And, but he didn't go to war. He's not right. a war hero. I was sitting up in his castle making more money, making making planes. I think he was making planes or ships or something. I don't know. I thought I was done learning about 120 seconds ago. And yet there's just more to learn when you keep these mics hot. You know, BMW uh, created some of those uh, ovens that the Jews went in. Yes. And which confused me because I I'll never forget. I went with my Jewish girlfriend to watch um, Schindler's List mm -hmm. at midnight on New Year's Eve that year. Oh, my God. And we walked out of Century City, you know, with a bunch of old Jews mm -hmm. weeping. And uh, they weeped and walked to the parking lot. Most of them got in Mercedes and BMWs, wow. which I thought was very confusing. Very confusing. Very confusing. And, um, I, you know, I was like, Do, they, they know. They know they, they, they were there. They know. They, I mean, yeah, Bavarian Motor Works uh, converted and, and uh, did uh, made, made uh, some of those ovens. That's what it stands for, Bavarian Motor Works? You never knew that? Nope. Come on. I love talking to you. I swear. You you never considered what BMW stood for. Bavarian Motor Works? No, it didn't come to mind. <laughs> they also no came idea. up with the cream pie over in that area. So oh, yes. Not everything is wrong with Bavaria. <laughs> oh, no. Some Bavarian cream will do, you, do your soul good. Uh, Gina, how did you go 33 years without knowing that BMW, uh, do you know what the symbol means on the BMW? Years. No idea. Let's look it up. All right. Let's no, no, don't, let, me, let me tell you. I just you, want to look at the symbol. Okay. Look at the symbol, but don't look at what it says. Okay. Just You, you see yeah. the blue symbol is blue yeah. and white, blue and white. That That is supposed to symbolize an airplane propeller going around really, really fast. Oh, that makes because sense. They, they made aircraft. I buy that. I'm looking at it right now. That, that's what it look it up and see if I'm right about that. If I'm making that point, you're you're probably right because that's exactly what it looks. Spinning airplane, a spinning airplane propeller, four yeah. color quadrants. Yeah, boy. That was, um, yeah, Bavarian motor work, <laughs> but that wasn't Hitler's car. Hitler put his money behind uh, the Audi. Oh yeah, I did Audi know was, that. And he also the VW, um, you know, the the, the yeah. every man's car. The, Volkswagen. The Volkswagen. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You never know what you're going to learn on here. No, you don't. Um, I don't know much about Russian. I don't Russian. I don't know much about European history, but I know a little bit about it. My, my dad's um, a doctorate of history, I guess. And that's how it rubbed off on you. Yes. Yeah, so you, you hear things here. You hear here and there. You hear a couple of things. God, that's so up. fascinating. Well, I, I think I'm topped off. I don't I think I would just have to have some Frente Bronca and, and take a nap after this. Frente Bronca, Gina. Frente Bronca. Oh, Frente. Yeah, yeah, me. Correctly. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Folks, oh, they should drink some Frente Bronca before they do that behind the scenes show over at uh <laughs> TV listening because uh whew, that, would, that would be that bad. behind the scenes show, Gina. <laughs> That is uh, that is something to behold. Yeah, tea um, is spilled, as the kids say. Yeah, it's uh, you, I I, don't, I, and, I mean we haven't been busted, so we're just gonna keep doing it until we get busted on something. Um, <laughs> folks, you can listen to the front end of that show for free. Yep, Absolutely. we do a show every week, easy listening with Gina Grad and Teresa Strasser. That is wherever your fine uh, podcasts are downloaded. And our Patreon shows what Vinny was talking about. That is at patreon.com. Just search easy listening. And it's a completely different show every week. And then, of course, I have grain free comfort food. That's a blog, totally free, inspired by Vinny and Anna. Just go to the page. Check it out. See if there's a recipe you like on there and let me know what you think. Go check out all of that. Uh, you're going to love what Gina's up to. And go look, come look at this podcast on on um, on how you say Vinny Tortorich's YouTube, because <laughs> you can see the Modigliani figure that started oh. this. We started with Modigliani and somehow we made it all the way to Hitler and the Volkswagen. Yeah. Quite you never know spectrum. what you're going to get. No. Uh, you know what to do before you go to Amazon, uh, go to VinnyTotteries.com, click through the banner. We also have the super fan page. You can go do that. 
check out everything Gina Grad is doing, including the Adam Carolla show. They have a great time there every day. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to go work out a little bit. I'm going to flip it on. I want to listen and see what they're up to. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so <laughs> on behalf of Gina Grad, my name is Vinny Tartarich. Put life into living and do it with enthusiasm. <laughs>